here we are on the set. It's Lifestyle of the Rich and Famous. Here we are with famous, famous uh, movie director Stephen Kyoto on the set of Killer Clowns from Outer Space. And you can see that he's wearing his uh, designer sneakers and his designer jeans, and he's sleeping in his designer leather coat. He has his designer storyboard book and his designer haircut. You're not yelling loud enough. Hey, I'm the only one that can sleep on this job. Robin, how you doing, you leech you? <laughs> yeah, Stephen, and how is it being a director of a motion picture? Well, Robin, it goes like this. Sometimes you never can direct your way out of a fucking paper bag, but then sometimes you can. What we do here at Kyoto Brothers, the older brother does all our 2D designs. So all the 2D artwork is his stuff. And then from those 2D designs, I'll take the characters and I'll, I'll do three-dimensional prototypes, like maquettes. And then from those maquettes, the producers and the directors, they'll then choose with us what uh, technique best suits the production. And Charlie does, uh, he's our art director, production designer. I'm sort of the director, and my background is stop motion. I was an animator years ago. And my brother Edward does mechanics, and he's also our producer. When the guy comes this way, he goes this way to the popcorn. Now he's got to go around. We don't have our shots this way without a platform. I just don't see why it has to be that we just drop to get rid of this detail. We'll just drop it. The door should be right next to your cocoon, like right here. So it's a combination of stop motion characters and puppets. We do a lot of stuff for The Simpsons. Whenever they want to do stop motion, they, they, you know, we, they give us a call. So. This was an Aardman parody that they did for The Simpsons called Willis and Crumble, a mix between The Simpsons and the Aardman style. And it's interesting, they're very, very close. When you see uh, an animation puppet, which looks like a little doll or a toy, come alive and move and, and emote, um, that's magic. In fact, in some ways, it's more tangible, more physically real than CG. I mean, expensive CG is great, but a lot of production companies can't afford that, so you get cheap things, and it looks, it looks bad. It looks like bad B-monster movies. But stop motion, there's a style to it, but there's something that kind of fits the fantasy of, of the technique and the creatures and the, the ambiance you want to create. It's fantasy. You're not going for reality. You're going for something that looks really cool, really exciting. You know, no matter how real CG is, it's always fake, and no matter how fake stop motion is, it's always real. It's undeniable, it's part of the technique. There's a tendency to over-animate things in CG now. Besides the camera move, which makes it kind of impossible to focus on a character. Uh, but the individual movements, I think because they've got time, and they look at it, they review it, they're critiquing themselves during the process that I think they overanimate, where a simple gesture is, is necessary. There's a lot of flourishes, there's a lot of bullshit that people do that kind of just is like a showcasing what they can do rather than what's necessary, especially in the facial animation. I'm not really a fan of lip sync. You know, you need enough lip sync just to kind of go with the rhythm of the dialogue, but I've seen some CG animation where they over-articulate, over-enunciate the mouth, and then you're looking at the mouth. And I'll tell you, that's the least important part of a, of a performance. You never look at it. You don't look at Anna Jolie's mouth. <laughs> a funny story about Team America, what Matt and Trey wanted. We had a sophisticated um, animatronic radio control type function in the mouths. And we had all the mouth movements. We had open and close, pursing, ooing and eyeing, and all the E sounds, all that articulation. And when Matt and Trey saw it, they thought it looked creepy. They said it looked like Chucky. They thought it was scary to see all that realistic articulation. And they said, no, no, no. We just want to see it open and close like in South Park. So we took away all those functions, just made it kind of open and close. And I think it worked brilliantly. It's not about articulation. It's about just syncing. It's about the about the dialogue. I wrote a book with a friend of mine called Alien Christmas. It's about aliens that land at the North Pole and Santa and the elves are the first line of defense against an alien invasion. 
So it's like a comic mix of classic Christmas folklore and a aliens. It's pretty funny. Then we have our killer clowns. I know you got a little room for those guys. Open up the door a little bit more when you guys come through, especially Paul. Uh, I know you guys will fit in there pretty well. And it's funny, you know, we've been talking about a sequel for a long time, and all the fans of the film, they're into a sequel, but they, they're making us promise. They said, we don't want to see CG. We want the clowns to be rubber, just like they were in the 80s. And I agree. I mean, I think it's, it's much better that way. But it's really funny how rabid the fans are. They really, really want rubber monsters. So that kind of traditional technique is, uh, I think, here to stay. Look at this. Clownzilla from Killer Clowns. We started out doing stop motion in the early 80s, but after films like Gremlins and E.T., I think directors wanted to f direct something live. They didn't want to rely on a post-production technique. So then we got involved with uh, animatronics and puppets and costumes. One, two, three, now! But then you're gonna, you're gonna let it go. Great, Jerry. Yeah. And you stayed up. That's it. That was pretty good. Okay. We really consider ourselves like character designers and we bring those characters to life through whatever technique is best suited for the production company. Some people say we don't do realistic stuff, we do characters or cartoony stuff, but I'm, I'm just reminded as we work with clients, they'll say they want an alligator or they want a dinosaur, and then we'll do a realistic interpretation. Then they say, well, can you make him meaner? Can you make his eyes bigger? Can you make his teeth? And well, that's making it a character. So now you're broadening some of the characteristics of these animals and it's more of a character. That's what we do. We bring character to these things. Some people might say it's cartoony. I disagree. I think it's bringing character. <laughs> and because we work in different techniques, it's hard to say what is our style. So I don't know how to describe it. We're in the middle of it, so don't ask me.